I don't have questions or not looking for hacks. Well, that did not go well. What's good, you guys? So today's video will be a Q&A. Obviously, I asked you guys to deliver something juicy and you did not disappoint. Hopefully, I skim read through, through them. But either way, let's continue. Abdul Raufal Geheni 7660 asks, Hey Rust, hello. Hope you're doing well. Well, I hope you're doing well. I have one question regarding identity in types. Mm, juicy. Which types would you say struggle the most with having an identity, identity separate of their communities? Another thing, which is more of an observation rather than a question, is relating to how the suggestive and the polar could be the main areas of focus in someone's life. I would say with the first question, which people get consumed by the community when it comes to their identity, I would say probably the FE basis, the EIEs, and, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but that's, that's what I think. Another thing is, you mentioned the suggestive and the vulnerable being the main areas of someone's life, and I kind of see it the same way, but not necessarily just the suggestive. A suggestive plays a big role, yes, but I think it's the super ego that plays the, the, the huge, huge role, because it's the area of problems, it's the area of uh, struggles, of the areas of copes, as you can imagine, if, if you look at your life, you're kind of defined by those things. You're defined by your superego. And it's funny, once you discover your true type and you understand each superego, that's when you have an aha moment being like, wow, it, it reflects perfectly upon my life. That's what we'd want with typology, ideally. Uh, Ramzilio, right? Ramzileo, Ramzilio, 6525 asks, Aaron Yeag, MBTR. Socionics, Enneagram 8, Social 8, SCE, ESF, the fuck P. Definitely, I mean, obviously people are kind of throwing types like Sexual 6, which makes zero sense. Like, I, I'm not even going to elaborate because I feel like it's insulting. Uh, I genuinely feel like for you as a person, it's insulting to you for me to tell you why he is in Sexual 6. But the Sexual 4 obviously has a bit more merit in a way. But even that misses, you know. Envy, uh, Envy who, 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 who the f*** he did. Aaron Envy, really. And then the argument behind the whole uh, four is that he had hatred for for the Titans. And it's like, yeah, he had hatred for the Titans, the, 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 the monsters who were oppressing everyone and oppressing him and limiting him from his freedom. So I would say, yeah, of course, he was hateful towards them. Aids can be hateful towards something, especially something like this so that's not the problem of course then people say you know he is too emotional for an eight and I, listen it's a fucking anime my opinion is this listen he fits everything about eight yeah of course he's uh, too emotional but i'm not gonna not type him eight because he's too emotional and he's too emo that just wouldn't be it just wouldn't work you know so eight core social eight obviously very focused on the oppressive nature of the titans trying to really sacrifice himself and and in the end to fight off the Titans. You know, I didn't watch the whole thing. I didn't watch the season four. I was watching first season, second season. But to me, it's very clear, you know, wants to fight against the oppressors and wants to save his friends and save his people at all costs, even if those methods are very questionable. The whole character is defined by grit, willpower, and determination. You know, there's not much else going on. He's very impulsive. He's very chaotic. He's completely... Uh, emotional in the moment so there's no rhyme or reason with this guy you know he's just going off his whims um, so ESI is very weird rational type uh, or Aaron is very weird do you have rage issues as Enneagram 8 how to deal with it also lack of patience you would not like me when I'm angry said someone right a green guy I don't have rage issues I don't even have anger issues you know because people think that being eight means like you have anger issues. Uh, I, I find people with anger issues a bit, I don't know, you know, not uh, kind of spurgy and kind of not someone I'd want to be around, you know, like what the f control yourself a bit. My relationship with anger is, is very comfortable. My relationship with anger is very open, unfiltered and free. You know, that's, uh, it's not, the, it's, it's, it, it's not my enemy. It's my friend, as weird as that sounds. So, you know, of course I get pissed off those are not deep really emotions i'm just i'm expressive of feelings like this in the moment but uh, my feelings don't stick you know anger is not the problem patience now that is a 
a problem because I don't have patience. That's one thing that pisses me off, if anything. Like, I am impatient. I'm impatient to get certain things. I'm impatient when things don't work a certain way. I'm impatient when I need to spend too much time doing something that should work literally when I touch it. It pisses me off. I've always been called a very impatient person. And I try to be patient. I try to relax about it and I try to take my time. Solar Online MT9YK asks, can you explain how SI Creative manifests and what does SE role look like? With SI Creative, I would say it's someone who is able to enhance his own and other people's uh, space, the quality of space. It's also someone who can provide comfortable uh, experiences and sensations for other people and for themselves. So they know what makes them feel a certain way and what makes them feel comfortable. You know, wearing, they are not the type to wear something that just looks nice, but it's uncomfortable just because it's beautiful. No, no, no. They would rather get something that's comfortable. SC role is very interesting because I, I think I've seen in the IE that they are attracted to prestige and and, and money and, and kind of certain status and certain positions, you know, which is probably why some people even type Andrew Tate as naive because it's all a lot of f***ing coping about money, a lot of f***ing coping about prestige, a lot of f***ing coping about the status. I think SE role can be stubborn when it comes to aesthetics, when it comes to beauty, when it comes to will, they might think they know better. It, it is obviously not really accurate because they have not that nuanced understanding of SE, so it just comes across as stubbornness. Bynum565 asks, can an SP7 be as brain dead as an Enneagram 8? Well, first of all, Bynum, I mean, being an 8 doesn't mean you are brain dead, you know? So that's already, um, obviously, you're kind of fucking around with that question, obviously. But there are some people who believe this kind of thing, that an 8, any, any person who uses a bit of a brain to create a thought is now not an 8. Obviously, no one says that they are intellectual, they are anti-intellectual. People don't understand what that means. But it's not a brain dead type. Now, does SP7, is SP7 going to be as brain dead, right, uh, as an 8? Uh, a 7 is a 7. The way you view life, the way you view situations, ideas, is, it's, it's going to be a bit more geeky. That's just the way that it is. You'll have more tolerance for abstraction. You're going to have more tolerance for geeking the f*** out. That doesn't mean you need to be a nerd, but you you're going to have less of that very concrete, very here and now attitude to situations. Because even when an aide can be quite intellectual, quite interesting and inquisitive, they're still very grounded people, right? They're still very concrete in how she works. Very, there's impatience towards too much abstraction. With the seven chord, you, you will not see this. Pedro J5249 asks, do you think that PY can be used to prove that not everyone fits an Enneagram subtype because of the fact that some PY types contradict with every subtype? I don't think you should use PY for justifications. You know, I mean, PY, listen, I like PY. It's a risky business to use a system that has many flaws and limitations as, as proof that something doesn't exist, you know? Not everyone fits an Enneagram subtype. It's, I mean, listen, this whole idea that not everyone fits an Enneagram subtype, it's a new trend started by f***ing hippies hipsters on PDB who are suddenly su identifying as I'm subtypeless. I don't fit anything. Either they are ignorant and they don't understand the system or they don't understand themselves in relation of the system. It makes sense, right? Because obviously this is going to happen. It's hard to kind of get an unbiased view, especially when you maybe don't have feedback from other people. So that can be a bit difficult. Is Billy Butcher going to get a soul back? Did he ever have one? Or is he going out in season five as a villain? I mean, Billy had a soul. Billy was a, was a douchebag. Billy was an asshole. He, he was not a piece of shit. He was not a horrible person. He was questionable. His moral actions were very questionable. And at some point he was, I mean, back his own teammates, throwing his own mother teammates under the bus. All kinds of things like this, which are obviously, I mean, you know, throw anyone under the bus, but your own teammates, right, that you are trying to team up with against the soups was the loyalty. Now, is he going out as a villain? I think we will see a lot of him as a villain. Last scenes of him, you know, maybe there's going to be a fight and he will fight as a villain, but then maybe in his death, he will redeem himself in some type of way. He'll come back as Billy Butcher, redeeming himself. That's kind of what I can see. Maybe sacrificing himself in some type of way 
uh, might happen. You know, that might be a good farewell for, for someone like Billy Butcher. Marlis BR 7 jv asks, how different anagram types of the same Socionics type manifest look like operate? LIE filter whether he is an SP3 or SP7, or how an LSE filter whether he is SP1 or SP3. Uh, you know, an LIE doesn't really make sense with Surf Preservation 3, it's a very sensorical type. But let's say with LSE, image orientation, right? Perfectionism, but it's about the product you make and it's about other people at the end of the day, it's your image. And SP3 is very image oriented. So there's a lot of seeking validation, maybe not as openly, but they still want to be validated. They still want to fit a certain metric to be worthy by working very hard, by being a good father, by being dutiful. At the end of the day, it's all created by this desire to, to feed the vanity, which, you know, is not the case with an SP1. An SP1 doesn't give a f about that at the end of the day. A good example of that is we were mentioning uh, Mother's Milk from the Boys TV show. I mean, would you confuse him for an SP3? Never. Does he give a shit about like an image, an image performing things perfectly because of other people and giving a fuck about what others think of him? Not really. It's a lot of focus on uh, self-control and being good, but there's no image. It's not about the image. It's not about the image, right? A lot of anger, a lot of anger, and that's the clear gut type. And uh, that's how I would look at it. Pathfinder9 asks, how does plus and minus differ on a vulnerable function, the same way as it does on every other element, as far as I'm concerned. Just AI asks, what is your opinion on typology, especially on mental disorders and neurodevelopmental disorders? Do you think it's something to, to take into consideration when typing someone? Do you think X action can be confused with Y motivation while it wasn't their motivation and motivated, motivated by a disorder? When it comes to mental disorders and, and you know, confusing action, confusing with why motivation, why it might be the disorder, you have to understand that you are the disorder. And I think that's, people don't get that. For example, if you have BPD, there's no such thing as, well, my BPD makes me give me this motivation, but my motivation is something else. No, this is your personality. It's a personality disorder. That's your personality. It's just your personality is disordered. You, you look at it as a whole. Look at your personality, forget BPD, forget the label of BPD, look at your personality. What is your personality like? And then based on that, you'll see it. National Democrat Ukrainian based asks, are you a superhero? If so, what's your superpower? Well, I'm glad you asked because yes, I am a superhero and not every superhero has to wear a cape, clearly. But my superpower is making people very, very angry. In fact, if I look at someone, someone hears my voice for more than 10 seconds, they will feel an intense burning sensation in their stomach. They won't know who hit them, but it certainly will be me. DOJOP asks, how does the demonstrative function manifest? Example, ESC and LSE being demonstrative. SE, are they aggressive? The demonstrative function is unconscious. If my demonstrative is FE, it's not controlled. You know, so my state of the emotions and, and, and the understanding of my emotions and all of that, how to impact people's emotions, that's, it's not very controlled. So there might be an emotional expression, but it's not measured. It's not measured with an impact like it is for the FE base, for example, which is, you know, again, conscious FE. They do things to impact people emotionally a certain way. I mean, ESC is very often demonstrative. SC is very easy to see. They're showing off their beauty. They're showing off their aesthetics. They're showing off the beautiful things that they do. It's very common for ESC. It's probably the easiest demonstrative to see. The demonstrative wants to earn praise, okay? It doesn't brag, but it wants to earn praise. I don't want to say that they are aggressive. Can they be aggressive? Of course they can be aggressive. You know, many, many types can be aggressive. That's not the problem. Besides aggression in of itself is not really related to a C, you know, being a C, having high C doesn't suddenly mean you are aggressive. You have higher kinetic energy and with higher kinetic energy, potentially when you uh, express it, that energy, right? Into a certain movement or certain action, it can be aggressive. Cobius, Varder Pijig6378 asks, I don't have questions or not looking for hacks. Well, that did not go well. Apparently, but not surprisingly, I am infected with severe ADHD. Wow, infected. 
they know it's a disease. The little block with dots became nine spinning blocks like psychedelic lava lamp. Hmm, lava lamp. Been checking the DSMO dimethyl sulfoxide. Somebody told me can be used as a vehicle to carry chemicals that would normally not be very observant. THC oil or mescaline. Lol. Party in your head. Bored so not really. The socionics thing is way too much Russian. What not? You asked it the last time. Very accurate. I have to heal from ADHD before tomorrow morning. I'll wear a mask before I infect someone. Sir, you are very kind. I mean, wow, you are... We don't want to infect other people with ADHD, right? We don't want to give them ADHD, so that's very nice. Farrell Jackson asks, how do you tell the difference between an LII and LSI behavior traits and values? A deep explanation. LII, okay? Cope the f*** out when it comes to aesthetics, when it comes to resources, how to manage money, other people applying their will on them. There is a lot of insecurity and instability in that area. This an LII often dresses plainly. An LII dresses in a way where it's acceptable socially. It's acceptable by other people. They need feedback from other people to know what looks good and what doesn't look good. They're insecure in those areas. They are very good at understanding potential of systems, potential of, of people, potential of themselves. That's not the problem. But the C is the problem. With LSI, that's not the problem. An LSI is an aesthetic genius. This is the most aesthetic type. They dictate what looks good. They dictate what doesn't look good. They're very organized when it comes to how shit looks and how they want things to look. That's first of all, very good at their will, applying their will, no issues whatsoever. Their issues stem from their own potential, potential of other people. They don't want people to pay attention to it. They don't want people to talk about their abilities or their, what they're incapable or capable of. This is not what they like, which is not a problem for the LII actually. He talks about potential of people, capabilities of people very openly and very freely. So that is the difference. A low query though Davidson, Davidson, asks clear differences between FE demo and FE mobilizing and real love examples, especially when it comes to friendships and relationships. Very emotionally expressive people. They can have no issues in expressing emotions in the moment and, and being very charismatic, being very charming, impacting people's emotional states either negatively or positively. With the FE mobilizing, you just don't have such freedom. They are much more sensitive to criticism and they need constant supervision to function really very well. As we know with the SLE and the ILE, they might not, they might overdo certain emotional expression, you know, ruin the mood. They might not express themselves fully. They might not express themselves enough at one point and then too much at another. They don't know how to do that. They don't know how to express their emotions. And they can be quite insecure about that. So any criticism or any remark on that will cause a lot of sensitivity and coping. Mr. VO asks, what do you type? Adesanya and Dr Drykus. Who are you picking tomorrow in the main event? What got you into Sessionics? Uh, Adesanya. I think Adesanya is going to fucking take the W. Drykus, I'm not sure what do I type. But maybe some LSE. I don't know. Maybe he gives me those LSE vibes. Adesanya, I'm thinking something like SEE i.e. So something like that. What got me into so socionics? Psychology, actually. Psychology got me into socionics. Um, well, actually, MBTI got me into socionics because that's how it started. But I got into MBTI because of psychology. I was interested in psychology. I was interested in human behavior and human psychology. And I've kind of, from there, I was very bored, stumbled upon some MBTI server, and the rest is history. You know, made my server, had invited people, had people, met, met more people. Then they introduced me to Socionics, and that's how I knew about Socionics. So either way, guys, that's it from me for today. If you have any questions that you want to ask in the comment section, I will answer them. This is your time to shine. I'm out, and I'm bouncing.